A careful analysis of that case reveals that that too, a solution to that, the solution to that is T of n is capital theta of n base 2 log of n. Okay? It's exactly what we got. Um, that's what we got when we were in the best case for quicksort. Now we're in this case where we have this 99% to 1% split are happening recursively, um, and yet we still get capital theta n log n, we still get the same rate of growth as the best case of uh, quicksort, as well as mer sort. Um, of course, the constant factor will be quite different. It's certainly going to take longer in the in the situation of the 99% uh, versus 99% uh, to 1% split. Um, but the rate of growth is still basically constant times n log n, as opposed to constant times n squared. Okay? And yet, it, it can absolutely be asserted that in the very worst case of quicksort, the growth rate is, the time complexity is capital theta of n squared, just like bubble sort, just like mer uh, just like in insertion sort and selection sort. Okay, it's possible for quicksort to sort um, um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a slow amount of time, um, capital theta squared. Okay, but we're not going to prove that. But in order for that to happen, you have to have a situation where where things go horribly wrong, um, and and the splits that occur are very uh, bad, and and that that, re, re, that 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 recurs quite a lot. Okay, is there anything else that we're able to apply the master theorem to? Are there any other problems that we know about that we can immediately say, okay, well, here's a here's a recurring, here's an algorithm of of a recur of a recursion nature, and um, we can analyze it with the master theorem. All right, well, here's one that comes to mind immediately: binary search. Right. So to remind you, binary search, you're looking for an entry in a sorted array, okay? The standard thing is that you're looking for somebody in a telephone book. So the entries are already sorted, and instead of just doing a sequential search, starting at the left and going one by one, um, instead, of, instead of using um, the very simple-minded sequential search, you, you instead take advantage of the fact that the list you're dealing with, the array you're dealing with, is sorted. So you go to the middle of the array and see if you can find what you're looking for there. If you don't, you can at least deduce that what you're looking for um, cannot be in one of the halves, right? Because if what you're looking for uh, comes before what you, what you just observed in the middle, then you can deduce that that it cannot possibly occur in the last half. So you throw that away. Basically, take your original list, cut it in half, and now you focus on the one half, and and then you do the same thing again recursively. So you know binary search. And the analysis of that is is really pretty pretty trivial. The time it takes to do a binary search lookup. And in here, I'm going to assume that we don't find what we're looking for. So we have to continue all the way through because we don't find what we're looking for. Okay? We could say that this is the worst case right here. Okay. So the time t of n will be equal to the time uh, t n over 2, the time it takes to look up what you're, you're to, to go look in one half of the original. Okay? Plus some constant time. Capital theta 1 is just constant time. There's a constant amount of time to go to the middle of the array, take a look at what's there, compare it to what you're looking for. Okay? All right, a very simple recurrence formula. And it fits the profile for the master theorem, doesn't it? 
okay? Um, in this case, little a is 1, little b is 2, and little f of n is capital theta of 1. Okay, so if you go back and, and check, you'll, you should see, you should observe that the second case of the master theorem applies uh, to binary search, right? Because the base b log of a here is the base 2 logarithm of 1, which is 0, and then n raised to that power, n raised to the 0th power is 1, and just double check the premises and and you should see that uh, that uh, this matches the 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 premises the hypotheses there and of course the conclusion of the second case then tells us that t of n is equal to capital theta of the base 2 log of n and that makes very good sense. That should be, at this stage, intuitive to you if you don't already know this about binary search. Um, binary search certainly does require an amount of time, capital theta, of base 2 log of n. And that's essentially because the number of levels of recursion is base 2 log of n. And at each level of recursion, you're just doing a constant amount of time of work. Okay? Let's look at a couple more uh, recurrence formulas, but this time I'm not going to pretend that they have any, you know, application uh, that we can see. Okay? I'm simply going to take some recurrence formulas that um, fit, fit uh, the requirements for the master theorem and then work out what the master theorem says about these recurrence formulas. So we'll just look at a couple of these. Uh, first one is t of n is equal to 3 times t of n over 4 plus 7n squared. So this means that in the master theorem, little a is 3, little b is 4. The base b log of a is the base 4 log of 3, which you should remember uh, from properties of logarithms, so-called change of base formula. That's the same thing as the natural log of 3 over the natural log of 4, which I can crank out on my calculator, is equal to 0 0.7925 approximately. Okay? Now let's look at the little f of n here. The little f of n is 7n squared. And we can see that that is capital omega of n to the first. In other words, 7n squared is growing at least as fast as a constant times n to the first. Okay, that's plain. n squared is certainly growing faster than n to the first. All right? And also, um, 1 is greater than that number 0 0.7925. So what I'm saying here is I can use, I can use the number 1 as my value of little p, little p in the master theorem. I get to choose a little p. I didn't have to use one. I could have actually used any number between 2 and 0 0.7925. Okay. But now, all, all, oh, sorry. It is also true that uh, what, what's written here. Okay, I'm not going to read this entire thing, but you can check that on your own. That is also uh, something we need in order to apply the third case, the third bullet in the re in the master theorem. So I should have said that right up front. We're gonna we're gonna check that what we're doing here is checking that that we're set up for the third case of the master theorem, third bullet. And then the conclusion of the third case of the master theorem punches out the answer t of n is equal to capital theta of f of n. 
Okay, well our f of n here is 7n squared, so we're finding that t of n is capital theta of 7n squared, and of course the constant factor 7 makes no difference, so that's the same as capital theta of n squared. Okay, and here now is our last example of using the master theorem. I'm going to begin with the recurrence formula t of n is equal to 3 times tn over 4 plus 55 times the square root of n. 55 times the square root of n. In other words, 55 times n to the 1 half. Okay? So this time, little a and little b are the same as before. Little a is 3, little b is 4. It means that the log to the base b of a is the same as before. Okay? thing that's different, of course, is f of n. f of n now is 55 times the square root of n. But I'm going to observe that that is capital O of n raised to the 0 0.7. Um, I, I chose 0 0.7 for my value of p, but in fact I could have chosen any value between a half and 0 0.7925 here. Okay? The key thing is that f of n is equal to capital O of n to the p, and p is less than the base b logarithm of a. Okay, that sets me up for the first case of the master theorem. And then I then simply turn the crank and see what the master theorem says. Master theorem says that t of n is capital theta of n raised to the base b log of a. So it's capital theta of n raised to the 0 0.7925. And you might say, well, so what? But... Um, from the standpoint of this course, if that original recurrence formula happened to be something that popped out of the analysis of some particular uh, algorithm, we'd be able to assert the uh, time complexity, uh, how long it takes to execute that particular algorithm, at least in terms of uh, rate of growth, uh, big theta notation.